Welcome to Classic. So I only learned this year that it's pronounced classic and not classique. <laughs> so that was a big yeah. learning opportunity for me. So tell us a little bit about what classic does. Oh, fair. I mean, uh, people have called it anything from, from classic to classy Q. I've heard that's been a fun one, but class IQ, class IQ, we've okay. also heard. Yep. Okay. And uh, well, classic is an end to end software development platform that's making it easier to enable all the great hardware that people are talking about at the show. Uh, we're trying to make it easier to program quantum circuits and develop really cool quantum code without you having to be a supreme expert in all the hardware modalities, the differences between them and every algorithm that exists and the different ways to implement algorithms. Um, so we're, we're making it more like programming classical computers and moving away from assembly level language. Yeah. And uh, the easier we make programming these quantum computers, the more we're going to enable the industry and enable uh, what, what some people at these conferences have been talking about, this kind of future quantum utility era, right? Right. You can't have quantum utility if you don't have software to utilize. One of the big things I've really seen is, you know, I get a lot of questions like, how do I learn quantum computing? And I'm like, which part of it, right? Yep. Like, a lot of people here have PhDs in their specific fields. Mm -hmm. And I, like, I have a friend who's a theorist in error correction. Mm -hmm. And I know a little bit about error correction, right? But then I ask him all my dumb questions. I feel super dumb in that, right? Yep. But his, he's the opposite. He's like, so this hardware, <laughs> what is it? And so that's the same thing. It's like, you're mm -hmm. looking at those applications. There's domain experts mm -hmm. that want to use quantum computers. But should they have to learn all the hardware, software, and their domain expertise and everything yep. else to use quantum computers? And I think a lot of us say, like, no, of course not. That's just not reasonable. Exactly. Yeah, I mean, uh, I, a lot of students ask me, you know, what should I learn to get in the industry? I'm really interested in quantum computing. And the next question is, well, what part of the industry do you want to be part of? Are you interested in the hardware? Are you interested in being a quantum programmer? Um, and a lot of students are, are talking to us because we're on the software side. So right. I get asked uh, a lot by uh, computer science engineers. Mm -hmm. And I tell them that you, you learn quantum computing kind of similar to how engineers learn you know, structural design. Mm -hmm. It's important to know how to do like stress load analysis by hand. Mm -hmm. So you, you get the fundamentals. But nobody does, you know, bridge stress load analysis by hand in real life. Right. You use higher level, you know, abstractions. You use like things like AutoCAD right. that'll model out bridges and simulate them and can do a lot more work and support you in doing what you're doing, right? So in the same way, uh, it's important to know kind of the fundamentals of quantum, right? Doing these five qubit quantum circuits to understand kind of the, the base level of it. But in the industry, no one's going to be building, you know, these quantum circuits using assembly level language right. code. You're going to have to need some level of abstraction uh, to build out quantum code that's going to solve actual problems right. and do some really cool things with it. And that's where companies like Classic or, you know, uh, really help in. Uh, whether it's Classic or other companies, the industry needs higher level modeling languages. Yep. Um, I mean, it's like, I, I say like we're in the punch card era sometimes, right? It's, it's oh, a weird yeah. thing because it's like, it's a, like the 70s in terms of the hardware. It but is, now yeah. there's a lot of people <laughs> already thinking about those abstractions and we're taking the lessons from the classical mm -hmm. systems in the last 50 years yeah. and building that on top of those like quantum intuition and, you know, to build these platforms and there's just a lot to do in the it industry. Is, it is, but it, it's a, it's a... There's a lot to do, but we know what to do. It's interesting because we, we've traveled this path before right. classical computing. So we know like all the steps that are necessary. We just don't know quite how to get there, but we know where we need to get to. Yes. So uh, kind of what classic was doing is exactly what classical computing did, right? We didn't keep doing assembly level language. We, mm -hmm. You can't do Boolean logic forever, right? Nobody programmed web pages in Boolean logic, right? Right. That'd be impossible. You use HTML, you use higher level abstracted programming languages that enable cool things like web page development right. and the facility and ease of it, mm -hmm. right? Just like HTML. Once that got developed, more people could program and develop right. web pages. Right. It, it's making it usable so more people can take advantage of it and do some really cool things. And that's what we're trying to do. It's also why we have the software free for students. Yeah. So let's take a little bit look at the platform as well. Yeah, absolutely. So this is a, I'm embarrassed. My, my face is on the demo of the, the software itself. Uh, we have uh, some uh, a software development kit that we're showing here. We also have a browser-based implementation, kind of a lower code interface mm -hmm. to get started in quantum, to be able to use uh, quantum. But I'm just going and showing kind of the high-level modeling language. And uh, this is actually some of the, the end bits of workshops I give at universities where we're doing a Grover's algorithm for a secret Santa problem. Oh, fun. So I'll group up the students in like groups of three and four and say like, okay, figure out who's getting a gift to who kind of thing. Okay. 
Um, and you know, hopefully the student groups end up using this as their like end of year fun thing they do for their club. But it's it's fun to learn quantum with some actual you know applications. Whether it's a fun toy application or not, it's just really cool to do that. So is that your favorite application, or what, what's what's the most fun application that someone new to the platform should start with? A fun application someone new to the platform can do. New to the platform, I think a, an achievable one is definitely the Secret Santa. It's easy to get to. You can get to it within a couple of hours mm -hmm. and have something that's just kind of fun and nerdy and say, I did, you know, a 50 cubic quantum circuit or something like that and get some really cool results. That makes sense. Um, but I've seen students doing like GUI based applications out of this because that's another thing higher level modeling languages enable kind right. of these interactive variable input uh, GUI interfaces. And now quantum looks like something that people are used to seeing, right? right? Something with a front end that looks good and, and then it makes it a conversation no longer about like gates, you know, gates and depth and qubits. It makes it a conversation about like, okay, I can, I get this in a way that makes sense to me, that looks like classical computing, that I can resonate with. And when the students do these kinds of projects, that, that really is cool. That's what resonates with a lot of people and starts making sense to a larger community. And I, I always love when I see these student groups building out these GUI applications, even for small toy things like a, you know, a, a traveling salesman problem where they put a couple of dots on the map and they, yep. they do that. It's, I don't know, it, it resonates and it's just cool to have this end product at the end of the day yeah. with, these, uh, with these groups. So one scary question that people ask is, mm -hmm. how much Python do you need to know to use this yeah. platform? Well, that's why we have both the, the Python interface, but we have the lower code uh, browser-based implementation. And we have a lot of code snippets that are pre-built in for you to get started not having to know a lot of coding at all. Right. Um, there's even some interfaces we have where you can put in just the variables that are important to mm -hmm. you. Like we have a couple for even, you know, uh, what you would think are kind of very hard things to do, like variational quantum eigensolvers right. simulating, you know, molecules. You can type in the molecules and their intermolecular distance, and we'll generate the quantum code for you without you having to be an expert at coding even to get started and see some results in quantum. Right, and yeah. you don't have to input that big file of mole Ooh. molecules yeah. and everything that you need to find out, right? Exactly, you know, one of my favorite examples uh, when I give demos at shows like this is, okay, here's how many lines of classic code it took to do this, and here's many, you know, how many lines it would take to do this in Q Sharp or in Qiskit, and it's, you know, 10 versus 1,000. Right. And it immediately shows just the, the pain involved Involved in programming things that actually solve problems right. in today's languages and the simplicity and why we need to move to higher level modeling right. languages. Yeah. And again, there's so much different hardware out there right now. So that's My another gosh. factor there, right? We were, I was joking about when we were talking back in August, right? It's like mm -hmm. European summer, I can just use classic, mm -hmm. write this code. My advisor thinks I've been working yep, yep. for a whole month, but actually, you know, you can optimize for different hardware using the platform, which is really great because trapped ions, superconducting qubits, they all behave different ways, they mm -hmm. do different things, different basis gates. Yep. So just not having to rewrite that all the time or even being like, well, they calibrated this machine, this like that's how it's calibrated today, or like this qubit is dead and now I have to like work around the qubit. Oof. Like you know, yep. all those problems. It just it takes so much effort that we don't have to do anymore. Yeah, I mean, that, that's the point of it. It shouldn't be, the difficulty of programming quantum computers shouldn't be, how do I make the hardware do this thing? Or knowing all the minutia of the hardware. It should be, let's try and solve some really cool problems with quantum computers. How do I best solve this problem? Not, you know, what's the circuit connectivity of this versus that? How do I translate my code from, from you know, Qiskit to Q-sharp? Because I want to use different hardware, mm -hmm. right? Uh, again, right, higher level modeling languages, simplify that out and make it so that you can pivot and use all the great hardware that's out there and enable kind of more free use and exploration in the field. Yep. So, yeah. what did you accomplish in 2023 and what are you all looking forward to releasing in 2024? Ooh, good question. Um, I think towards the beginning of 2023, we released our integrated development environment. So now we have like a browser-based application that users can get into. Um, they don't have to download like pack, uh, Python packages to start using Classic, to start programming in Quantum. There's a more user-friendly interface. It, it's graphically pleasing too, so it, it looks uh, less intimidating, honestly, right? Quantum is an intimidating topic in the first place. Let's try and lower that barrier to entry and make it so that it doesn't look as, as scary at the onset to start using it and make it as easy as possible for users to really start using the software and programming quantum circuits. And that's everything we're really trying to do in the company. We're trying to lower that barrier to entry and enable the industry in more 
engineers, more computer scientists, more physicists to program quantum circuits and take advantage of all the really cool hardware. I mean, especially all the cool hardware we're talking about at these kinds of shows. Right. All these major keynote talks are talking about, you know, the qubit fidelities are getting better, more qubits, you know, bigger systems or, or new technologies. Well, let's figure out a way to actually use them and program them. It's great to have the hardware, but you need to be able to interface with these systems in a way that is uh, useful, feasible, and doesn't take you know a year to learn how to program them. So we have this kind of new integrated development environment. Um, later in the year, in this show, actually, we opened up a, a GitHub repository of code. Mm -hmm. um, so now we have a whole library of, of codes that uh, people can take, full project files, kind of end to end, not just, you know, here's QAOA, but applying that to real world problems so that people can see how quantum can be applied. And so they can take these files and modify them for their own use cases as well. Um, I know one thing we want to do next year is to open up that GitHub repository and allow people to submit their own code yes, to it. Yes, I'm excited for that one. <laughs> it's really cool because people are, I'm, I talk to people at these shows all the time, all the cool projects they're working on. Yep. And I would love for them to work on that in Classic, submit their code files yep. and contribute to the community and keep growing this community. Yeah, my interns are just like, yep. you know, looking for places where they can build a portfolio too. So I'm like, mm -hmm. perfect. You know, they're going to release that. We're going to put some code in there. It's going to yep. be awesome for you. You're just going to learn a ton. So so it's, mm -hmm. a, it's a really cool initiative. And uh, hackathons. Yes. You all have been famous for doing some hackathons yep, yep. over the years. Can mm -hmm. we expect one in 2024? Yes, we're going to be doing a hackathon at the beginning of 2024. We're thinking about Q1. We haven't announced an exact time frame, but do look forward to that. You heard it first here. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> Thank you. Absolutely.